what is going on everyone welcome back to the channel for another video and in this video from the title it entails basically something that we thought was going to work or i thought that was going to work with the uh, forerunner um pretty much didn't go to as planned but it is the end of 2023 and it's beginning of 2024 right around the corner in a couple days so i can at least say um you know it wasn't a big hiccup or anything it's just something you like i've always talked about before when you spend a couple hundred dollars here and there uh, on parts, on vehicles. Um, some stuff just does not work out and you're kind of stuck with it. Uh, and I'll explain that in the video. But for 2024, or actually for 2023, I think we accomplished a lot. So let me get that little piece out of the way. I feel like we accomplished a lot with bringing the Forerunner to the channel. That was super unexpected. Uh, very thankful for that or for the opportunity to be able to share this build with you guys. And it's it's really a super uh, like huge blessing honestly um behind the scheme of things like just to have a cool vehicle like this and definitely a bucket list vehicle of mine that i plan to eventually get and i got it like that so it's funny that things work out like that um and the mustang um if you guys have been following the channel or just new to the channel the mustang went through a couple years of just like hiccups from uh bad transmissions to uh problems with the engine the first engine that was in it the first coyote and that I was able to tackle and get a T56 with a little help and find this uh, Gen 2 Coyote motor with a lot of patience. Uh, ended up with the one that I was gonna buy eventually and then I eventually bought it with a, I guess, huge, huge discount to what the original uh, for sale asking price was. And like I said, just said, it's funny how stuff works out. So I'm super grateful for that. And, you know, I don't get a lot of views or anything about that. And, but, you know, that doesn't really matter to me because I'm just glad to share the journey of the Mustang and now the Forerunner. The forerunner. And we'll see what 2024 holds. And hopefully it's an S550. And we will build that and I will share the journey with that with you. I will share the journey of that build process with you guys as well going forward on the Forerunner and the Coyote Mustang because we're going to keep it. Um, like I said, if that new edge roller, you know, comes around at a super cheap price, it may be super tempting, but from the comments from the last video and a few, I guess like people that reached out were like, you know, no, keep it, you know, that's the car that really defined the channel. And that's the car that we basically have come to know or love. And it was actually some people that I didn't really even think that they, uh, remembered the car. They thought the car was still around anymore, but super grateful for those, uh, comments or people that reached out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and dive into this video real quick. Uh, appreciate you guys. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. So from the thumbnail, it's kind of crappy, but as you can tell, the factory intake is back on um, the Forerunner. And that being said, uh, yesterday I went ahead and installed the Volant, I think it is. They're super big and I think the Jeep community, uh, especially in the Dodge community as well, I think with like the, the Dodge, I don't, I think the guess the Dodge Ram or the Dodge Ringo, a lot of the Jeeps uh, being Chrysler is Dodge and all that back in the day till now. Um, they're regarded, I guess, huge in that uh, applications uh, or huge in those applications and they had a lot of good feedback. So I saw that they did stuff for the Forerunner and I was gonna get opt for the k &N intake. I know a lot of people talk uh, shit on k &N. Uh, I've never really had an issue with them. I had one on the Tahoe, fit pretty well. Uh, I've installed a couple, actually, one on a Jeep, uh, one I used to work at the shop, and another one, uh, I forgot what vehicle it was. Didn't really, you know, it, it come, comes and goes, but with a bigger company like that, um, you know, the, the stuff, the problems that you're gonna come across are probably smaller, I guess. So really didn't have an issue. What drew me to the Volant was how the factory has the airbox, and that one had the airbox as well instead of the K&N just has this open kind of element almost where the air just goes and it has a little heat shield. Uh, I just prefer the look of the factory air box and I think it performs a little better, but it didn't work out as planned. Uh, so it took about, I'd, I'd say an hour to install. Uh, it took about maybe 15 minutes to take this thing off. And when I put the factory one back on and took the Volant off uh, today, this morning, uh, did all that in both in 30 minutes because then you know, i knew everything where everything went um so you know first time owning a forerunner kind of don't know where stuff goes but you know figured it out along the way and it, not super hard at all so pulling it out of the box i was like you know pretty excited i'd already pulled it out of the box to check it out and kind of lining everything up the uh i felt like the build quality wasn't there like for 300 something dollars uh 
the box sat right here. So you see that you have this. This is built into the factory air box, this little tube thing that lines up. And there you can see this one basically was just like open right there. So it didn't meet there. And I thought it, you could move it as close as possible. It had this one screw right here, but the box sat right here. So the box like overlapped to where you would put the screw into inside of the box, which understandably, you know, understand to hold the box in place. So it's just one bolt. But the box itself was rubbing. You can actually see where, I guess it did, rub on the power steering reservoir. Uh, it knocked this out of place. So it was just kind of, I, I felt like they kind of guessed and they were like, oh, we'll just go with this. This seems fine. So everything lined up here. Uh, all right, the elbow itself, we had to drill the holes for the mass airflow, which, yeah, whatever. I feel like, uh, you know, I, I feel like if you're gonna do that, pre-drilled holes are kind of better and just instead of these little indentions on where to do that but you know whatever so the biggest thing that really got me was so you take the mass airflow out here and it sits on the outside the box was bigger and you had to basically run this with the fitting that you fit around here through the intake so the elbow of the intake goes into the box as well with the mass airflow so you have to basically fish everything through the box and the kind the directions are never the best and the directions don't tell you that so you're doing all that and then it kind of just gets in the way so did all that got it together it was getting dark i was like all right we got it together let's just roll with it put the filter on the filter was hard as hell to even get on because the mass airflow the way that it is the way the can in is the, i saw that the mass airflow sits up here like on the outside like this you can line that filter up pretty well and have no issues this filter was hitting the mass airflow from inside the box and it was kind of crooked so I had to like force it almost and it felt like I was not going to break it but it, it's just you really shouldn't have to do that so I don't know if it was just like a you know like a I guess you call a bad batch or if it's just you know the way that they are for the forerunners so I went ahead and did that and then uh, my girlfriend and I went out for this uh, comedy thing and uh, drove it there or I was driving to get gas and the check engine light came on. So it's like, oh, so I read some stuff on a form real quick, right by my house, went back, pulled the negative, and I had the negative off um, when installing it. So so I read, oh, just you drive, let it take a gas cycle through and it should figure itself out, which I always don't believe that. I believe it has to be tuned and that is the biggest headache here. So we drove to the comedy thing. Um, I let the car idle for a little bit when I, when I was there because we were just kind of uh, hanging out, waiting to go in. And, uh, when we came back out driving at home, the check engine light came right back on. So at that matter of point, I was just like, well, I'm just going to th throw the factory one back on tomorrow. So that's what I did. And I was reading more into it. And a lot of people said, you know, that they've had the same issue and you have to tune it. And I don't want to spend extra money to get this thing tuned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and buy the Canon air filter, uh, or intake holder intake setup and see how it fits and if it doesn't um i read that you can just return it uh being like i don't have to drill anything so basically pull it out of the box line it up see what happens and if nothing nothing happens you know just return it the volant one i believe i'm stuck with since i had to drill the holes for the mass airflow sensor so looks like that might be sitting on the shelf or might go up for sale i don't know maybe somebody else could you know wants to tune the vehicle go ahead I just don't see the point of tuning this just for a mass airflow. There's going to be no performance gain really whatsoever and maybe saving a little gas. The reason that I bought it was more or less to see if it might save a little gas because these things don't get the best gas mileage. So adding one or two gallons per, uh, you know, per tank or whatever really kind of helps out, I guess. Not bad. Uh, helps out a little bit, but it was more for the aesthetic look and I was just like, you know, have a little money to spend why not be kind of dumb with it and just go all out you know that's that's what it, i was honestly thinking and that's kind of my uh thinking behind the k n but i know k n probably has a bigger or or a better name you know that they kind of go by a lot better reviews too the volant it's i just felt like the build quality wasn't there for this maybe it's different for the you know chrysler applications and dodge applications or tacoma applications i don't know maybe i just got a bad one but it looks cool it's just the quality, like I said, isn't there for something in, you know, in my opinion, you know, I, I try to hold my opinion, I guess my standards for parts a little higher than most, but 
you know, it's not like just throwing a JLT on and sending that tune because the, the JLT I have is tune required. You know, you, you send that tune to Lund or VMP or whatever, whoever tunes your car. And, you know, they make up for the whatever's going on, if it's running rich or lean or whatever. I don't know so much about tuning, but you get what I'm saying. So coming from that, I'm just going to wait and uh, we'll see what happens with the K&N. But on top of that, uh, like I said, that we're pretty much done with this build. Looking at lift kits here shortly, we'll get this thing uh, squared away on a lift kit. Maybe two to three inch, probably an old e man emu. Uh, if you're, I guess, into the Forerunner or just off road game, you know that name. It's pretty well it's, uh, built with the Bilsteins or Bilstein shocks, and I believe this already has them, but we're just going to throw new ones on, anyways. Looking into replacing this with those chase lights, there is that company, I think it's Snow Customs or something like this, off road customs or snow off road customs or something like that. So basically, they have two things you can actually keep the factory spoiler but you have to notch this out a little bit which i would didn't don't want to do and they you replace your third brake light with their chase light so it acts as a third brake light but you have the options to make it as a chase lights which i thought was cool but i probably won't do um and what i wanted to do was take this off they send you one a new spoiler like this but you have the baja lights which would be the same as the third brake lights that go in here uh utilizes your factory I guess not bolts but where you line it up and install it and i think that's something that we'll do later on uh i was thinking you know it calls it was right around a little over six hundred dollars to do that that what turned me away from it was uh, i'd have to have somebody kind of wire it up and stuff like that which isn't a huge deal to kind of have somebody do um i'm not big into the wiring game and doing all that stuff uh but it comes as like bare metal looking so you have to send it or take it somewhere to get uh powder coated black or whatever which i would do i'll just keep it simple black and uh do all that so that's a another you know 100 150 bucks kind of didn't want to do so what i found out that i think it's teq or tec customs or whatever it is they do headlights so i've had the retrofitted headlights on the mustang before and i was like let's just go ahead and spend the money um that i would have spent the same basically the same price uh for the chase lights and get something that i'm going to use a lot more so we went ahead and got the uh darker corners because this is a two-piece so we went ahead and got that to match with the headlights super simple uh and what i like about these that they have with the ones that i'm getting they're glass so they don't really they're harder to fog up or whatever so the back the inside housing is going to be like a i guess like a matte or just basic kind of like black color uh i guess like the battery that color i guess black uh, so nothing super like no halos or anything. I, I didn't want that, but it's going to have the retrofitted sh uh, shrouds. I think the Apollo ones is what I went with. If you guys are familiar with that. Um, and I think that they send their led kit, but we already have the Oxido one. So it's going to be much brighter and, uh, much better looking. Uh, the Oxido LEDs definitely, definitely help a lot, especially with these, uh, seeing at night with the fog lights too. Um, but it's def definitely going to be a much of a game changer or a huge game changer, for the headlights being retrofitted because I've had it on the Mustang before before somebody backed into it and those were expensive that's why I never got them again just went with the Dio Dynamics on those the HIDs and the lighting still sucks nothing on diode I don't believe it's just the those years of Mustangs the lights suck so maybe we'll get retrofits one day for that so these I ordered those last week so their build time is six to eight weeks uh We'll see. I'll let you guys know when I do get an email from them. I'm not going to bug them. Uh, I'm going to see, wait to six to eight weeks. And if I don't hear anything by like week six or seven, I'll, I'll go ahead and send them an email and see what's up. But I think that's going to be super, just super cool to have and something fun to install. Super easy to have the, uh, so these will match the headlights as the black and they'll kind of be like a darker look almost. So like I said, keep the aesthetic looking clean, simple, and, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I appreciate you stopping by for this longer video. Um, I will catch you guys in the next video. Make sure to give this, I don't know, any video or this one a thumbs up on the channel because it definitely helps out a lot. And uh, we'll get that grill installed too, that TRD uh, grill with the Raptor lights, which will be cool because I have the multicolors. So it can change them out to, I think, three or four different colors. So this thing is coming along, but we're definitely going to focus on the Mustang here too. So I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one.